Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Exine and Protein X. In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk about cryopreservation and additionally the process and protocol for the cryopreservation process. So let's begin. So cryopreservation is a process that preserves organelles, cells, tissues or any other biological constructs by cooling the samples to very low temperatures. So basically, during the cryopreservation process, cells stay in the quiescent phase or G0 phase. So all of the biological process and physiological process and cell cycle progression halted during the cryopreservation process. So now we need to know that how this kind of uh, cryopreservation process it happens. So cells cannot be stored with simple cooling or freezing for longer time because of the ice crystal formation. So the intracellular ice crystal formation that make the damage of the cell membrane and that causing the cell death. And another important reason is the osmotic shock or osmotic stress. So osmotic shock is a physiologic dysfunction caused by a sudden change in the solute concentration around the cell and which cause a rapid change in the movement of water across its cell membrane. So because of these two important reasons, cells cannot be stored with simple cooling or freezing process. So for cryopreservation, there are some different kind of process of cooling and there are some, some special kind of agents that known as the cryoprotective agents are used to prevent the crystal formation. And those cryoprotective agents that are used during the cryopreservation process, these are glycerol. So it is widely used in the storage of bacteria and animal sperm specifically. And for DMSO, that is first synthesized by the Russian scientist Alexander Jasev in 1866. And this DMSO is mainly used for mammalian cell cryopreservation. But there are some disadvantages of DMSO. Those are the DNA methylation and histone alteration. And another one is that DMSO may alter chromosome stability, which can lead to risk of tumor formation. So these are two important disadvantages of the DMSO. However, DMSO is widely used because of it's very cheaper and is available, and uh, it has very uh, lower toxicity. So because of this reason, DMSO is used widely for mammalian cell cryopreservation. So next is the how does DMSO prevent crystallization? So the first one is the broadening the of the glass transition of water. So glass transition temperature this is very much closely related to the crystal formation, and DMSO it broadening of the glass transition of the water. And second is the increasing the intracellular solute concentration. And next is the increase the porosity of the cellular membrane which allows water to flow more freely through the membrane. So these three important regions that uh, actually it uh, because of these three regions TMSO prevent crystal formation. And next is the, the process of the cryopreservation. So basically there are some step by step process. So first there are some this kind of uh, container. So this in this container first the cell uh, need to be need to be stored in the this kind of uh, cryo vials and then put in, the, in this con kind of container and then need to put in the minus 80 degree centigrade freezer but not directly into the liquid nitrogen. So there are this kind of steps you have to follow. And then after that, uh, you have to put your cells in minus 80 degree centigrade freezer for a couple of days or maybe one or two days. And after that, you have to put, you have to transfer those cells in the liquid nitrogen. And basically liquid nitrogen temperature is around minus 196 degree temperature. So you should not directly store your cells into the liquid nitrogen that harm your cells and it causing cell death. And next is the 
the different kind of protocol that available for the cryo preservation process. The first is the people use 5% DMSO with 95% complete media and that media is like with 10% DS. And second protocol is a 10% DMSO and 90% complete media. And the third one that is most important and I use personally this, this protocol there is a 5% DMSO and 95% FDS and no media and in this process in this third protocol the recovery rate of the cell is very very high compared to the other two protocols so here it, this uh, number three protocol it works very very well and obviously also you need to make sure that cell culture media content no trypsin so basically for the digestion you need to use the trypsin right so after that you need to stop the digestion by the ABS but before that you need to remove the trypsin completely by the centrifuge or whatever you the process you follow but you need to make sure that no trypsin in your media that you gonna store or cryopreserve because trypsin is very much toxic for the cells that may cell death and the recovery rate of the cell in this case is very low so this is uh, this kind of things and then also the thaw uh, thawing process after the cryopreservation process you have to thaw the cell and uh, its rapid thawing at 37 degree centigrade is recommended to avoid intracellular ice formation so basically in thawing process you have to you can uh, directly you can put your cryo vials into the uh, this 37 degree centigrade temperature water to warm it and to melt your cell and uh, also the application of the cryo preservation process there are lot of applications the first one is the cryopreservation of the cells or organs cryosurgery ecology and plant physiology blood transfusion bone marrow transplantation and in vitro fertilization so IVF so we know that all so this is very much widely used this cryopreservation process in the IVF so this is all about the cryopreservation process protocol and everything else so i hope this video will be helpful if you like this video kindly hit the like button share it and please and please subscribe my channel and if you have any queries kindly write in the comment section thanks